5-2-3. It'll be Dean Kubel, Hardy, Sagrero Smith, Winters, Kafka, Ireland, Odame, and Odehambo. The three-striker approach for seventh-year head coach John Murphy. As mentioned, Dagoberto Romero in the net. Our official today, Aaron Hernandez, whistles for the start of this match, and we are underway at Hoops Family Field. Marshall going with their trademark 4-3-3 approach. Alves, Dugan, Seydou, Masiunas on the back with Fernandez, Okiyoshi, and Souza in the middle. 15 combined goals up front on the three-striker approach for head coach Chris Grassi between Yosef and Bell. Adam Almesh, the transfer out of Albany, also up front, the right forward. Dugan will go back to Seydou. Another team coming into Hoops Family Field, putting five on the back, trying to pack it in. Thundering Herd broke into that top 25 for the first time since October. 2019, as mentioned, since then they are 24-4-4 against unranked opposition. A good interception there on the near touchline by Samuel Odame, the sophomore out of Accra, Ghana. Three goals, two assists this season for Odame, the leading scorer on this squad. Okiyoshi will play it back to Dugan. The Thundering Herd experimenting is maybe a good way to call it with little nuances to their 4-3-3 approach. Trying to keep teams on their heels. Head coach Chris Grassi told me earlier last week that his team wanted to try a couple different rotation tactics as they play it back to Romero who slips and a good sliding challenge comes in from Keon Dean, the freshman out of Miramar, Florida, making his seventh straight appearance on the back row. Good probing cross forward finds Joao Souza. Souza slips, whiffed on the cross attempt, and that is guided out off an eagle. Colin Masiunis will toss it in in front of the Georgia Southern technical area. Eagles coming in off a 2-2 road draw at Stetson. First draw since October 21st of last season against then number 21, Northern Illinois. Eagles were in the MAC that season. That was just last year, a short stint in the Mid-American Conference after the Sun Belt Men's Soccer League folded for just a season. Played back forward. Marshall on the front foot here. Souza surveys his options. Now Fernandez. Okiyoshi wants to play Souza through, and Joao Pedro pulls up, grabs the hamstring for just a moment, but seems fine and walks it off, and that will give Romero a goal kick. Eagles come into today's contest a minus 27 goal differential. That is by far the worst among Sun Belt Conference teams. They are on pace to register their lowest goal differential since all the way back in 2009. They posted a minus 36 GD that season. In a good spot here, though, is Jona Kafka, the native of Hamburg, Germany, making his 11th start. Ali Simla will come out of goal. Guided forward to Okiyoshi. Played ahead to Fernandez. Now Marshall, their trademark build from the back, and it's Alves. Had a wonder goal against Old Dominion late in the second half to get Marshall on the board. A whistle comes in from Hernandez, and that will be a free kick. Almesh went down. Adam Almesh leads this team in assists. Six assists this year for the Albany transfer, ridden to the turf by Austin Hardy. Hardy played all 90 minutes last match against Stetson. That man, Chris Grassi, in his sixth season as the skipper of this Marshall men's soccer program, 63, 30, and 16. 
Dugan heads it back in off the cross. A dangerous position for this Georgia State defense. Crossed back over to Almesh. Marshall starting to turn the screws early offensively. Almesh's shot is blocked. And off the volley, Odame will clear that away. Odame could have easily flubbed his lines there under all that pressure and stayed cool underneath it. Now Simla will play it back forward. Almesh, no options for him, plays it back to Souza. Eagles probing forward now. Odame ahead. Kafka wants the cross. Good defensive positioning from Masiunis. Back through the middle from Kubel. Now Kafka. Alex Smith, two goals this season for the sophomore from Jacksonville. Weaving through a crowd of green and white shirts. This cross comes in from Smith. Dugan meets it in the middle with the head, and it's cleared away. A poorly timed turnover coughed up there by Austin Hardy. Now on the move forward is Marshall. Almesh, good recovery by Hardy, hounding him. Almesh will play it back to Okiyoshi. Cleared back down, Odame, it's a foot race, he'll win it. Going one on one with Seydou, as Seydou goes to ground. Good defensive effort and the sliding challenge applied at the right time. Yosef's pass through the middle, intercepted, clattering to the pitch after a hard collision was Fernandez. He and Victor Kubel, the freshman from Hindenstead, Denmark, colliding, and we take a look at it at the replay. Kubel just stuck that right leg out and collided with Vinicius Fernandez, the senior out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. Dugan plays it ahead, finds Alves, now Matthew Bell. Bell able to slip that one through, finds Souza, the cross, back out. Eagles able to answer the bell. Now Seydou getting tangled up with his opposite number 24, Jack Ireland, the freshman, Orlando City Academy product. And Ireland able to win a free kick for Georgia Southern. Dating back to 2019, Georgia Southern have lost eight of their last nine against ranked opposition. The only other during that span, a draw. The aforementioned draw with then number 21, NIU, last year. As Dugan, plenty of time and space, will track that down. 0-5-1 oh, are the Eagles against teams ranked inside the top 25 since the start of last year. Seydou over to Dugan from Simla. Nice chip forward, finds Alves, the fullback, who joins the rush. That's a great sliding challenge that comes in. That looked to be Sagrero, I believe, was the one who applied the sliding challenge. Now Dugan waits one forward. It's an onside play, finds Souza. Thought about taking it off the volley, hesitated just a minute, and that was enough of a window for the defender to stick the foot in and cut that out. It was Kafka who's going hard in the battle with Souza. 
Souza goes down in the box. The home supporters begging for a foul call, as is Vinicius Fernandez, who has words with Hernandez. Now look at it again here. Souza really battling hard there with Yona Kafka. No foul given by our main official today, Aaron Hernandez. Don Cooper, Kyle Mast, the two assistant referees. Adam Walters, the fourth official in the substitution area this evening. Okiyoshi's shot. Banks off a defender, and that allows Dagoberto Romero to pick that up and end the opportunity for Marshall. Romero, a 2.65 goals against average this season. As Seydoux will head that out. Was looking for Jack Ireland on that pass. Ireland, 53 minutes played in his last appearance, a season best for him. A former Florida 7A player of the year in high school. This is a Georgia Southern team loaded with youth and inexperience, but talent at their previous level was that. Booted high into the air. Poor place for a turnover for this Marshall team. They cough it up, taken away by Kubel. Now Kubel will move forward with it, at least for a moment. Now Seydu plays it to Okiyoshi. Simla, Seydu, Masayunis, Okiyoshi. Little tiki-taka passing there for the thundering herd as Okiyoshi went down and Chase Winters intercepts. Played a season high 42 minutes, did Winters against Sunbelt foe JMU earlier this year. Back forward, they find Odame, the Akron, Ghana native. Nothing doing there for Odame. Odame tallied a goal and an assist in the last appearance, last match against Stetson. It was Odehambo who struck first against Stetson in Georgia Southern's last match, 19th minute. They did concede two straight in the 40th and 46th minutes. But then Odame found goal in the 70th as Almesh getting tangled up on that far side. It will be a corner kick for Marshall. Green and white shirts will move forward. Thundering Herd had 19 corner kicks against Old Dominion in their last home match. No goals to show for it. In fact, this is a Marshall team, 17th in the country in corners per match average. Almesh in swinging ball off the service and headed away from danger. Masiunis will volley one back out wide. Almesh in, finds Alves. Bell tries to chip it back. Dugan on the doorstep. Morris Dugan, the transfer from Iowa Lakes College, opens his account on the season and opens the scoring for Marshall. A good look at it on the replay. Alves tight on the end. Best was moving the ball played. This is from Colin Masiunis to Adam Almesh on the far side. Restart, a 1-0 lead for Marshall. Alves will give chase. Georgia Southern most assuredly will try to crank up the pressure and pull equal. 
This is the first meeting between these two teams since November 9th of 1996. It has been quite some time. Funny enough, they shared a conference then like they do now. Members of the Southern Conference were the Eagles and the Thundering Herd. Georgia Southern getting the better of Marshall in that last matchup in the Southern Conference Tournament. A 2-0 victory on November 9th of the 1996 campaign. Dugan will swing one to the outside, able to find Joao Souza, the native of Brazil. Souza has become a mainstay in the starting 11 for Marshall. Saw 13 starts a season ago. And has started every match this season for the Hurt. Eagles set to make their first change. Zachary Martin, the freshman out of DeKalb, Georgia, set to check in. Dugan. Now Okiyoshi, great ball ahead, able to find Souza. Left off for Fernandez, has options moving forward, flanked to his left by Almesh. Back to Alves, who joins the rush again. Right there, on the end line, this time Romero answers the call and scoops that off the turf. Thundering herd, we're desperately trying to double their advantage, but Dagoberto Romero making his ninth consecutive start, had other ideas. Masiunis has options going ahead. A bright start for the Thundering Herd. 13th minute goal from Morris Dugan, the difference so far. Five shots already for Marshall, three on frame. Intercepted by Kubel. Now forward to Odame, muscled off the ball momentarily by Masiunis. And Odame and the Georgia Southern Eagles losing ground. Played back over to Yona Kafka. Turnover forced by Alves. A well-timed sliding tackle from Keon Dean. Out for a Marshall throw. Dean, the freshman from Miramar, Florida, over there on that far side. The right back has played all 90 minutes in each of his last three appearances. Almesh walking the line on that touch line on the far side. Dugan back to Sedu. You can't see it on your screen, but just to the left of the frame is Ali Simla all the way out, way far away from his home and net. Forward to Yosef. Back heeled, oh, a beautiful ball. That would have connected to Almesh. Cleared away by Georgia Southern. For those that have not watched a lot of Marshall men's soccer, that may be alarming to hear that Marshall's keeper is all the way out, hanging around sort of that no man's land territory between the midfield stripe and the 18 yard box. That's just the kind of keeper Simla is, as Souza able to find Bell, and Bell can't bury it on the doorstep. Changes made by Georgia Southern. Mauro Gutierrez will come in, as will Zachary Martin. Martin, a goal this season, tallied it against UNC Asheville. Off the volley, here's a look at the replay. Had Keon Dean breathing down his neck, and the freshman Matthew Bell was that close to finding his ninth goal of the season. Go, 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 go. Al 
Alves will play it back to Simla. Zaydu forward, finds Okiyoshi. Very quickly, another attack developing from the back for Marshall. Nifty moves from Almesh. Finds Bell, tried to leave it back off for Almesh. Who was looking for a foul call and won't get it. Heard will have the throw. Matthew Bell has not scored in three matches. Last struck against Robert Morris in that 3-1 win to close out non-conference play for the Herd here at Hoops Family Field. Just tells you what kind of season the young freshman is having, that that is a massive goalless drought for him, just three matches. Masi Yunus finds his fellow senior and Milo Yosef. Bell forward with it. Bumped off the ball initially. Now crossing back into play finds Masi Yunus. Dangerous positioning here. Yosef off the volley. Couldn't hit it well enough. And it's into the gloves of Romero, who slips on the drop kick attempt. And Mohamed Seydou will rip that away from the possession of Alex Smith. Thundering Herd able to double their advantage. The offense pouring on early for Marshall. Joao Souza finds the back of goal for the fifth time this year. Bell's shot initially parried away, and Souza capitalizes on a juicy rebound coughed up by Dagoberto Romero. For the fifth consecutive match, Georgia Southern has conceded at least two goals. Marshall able to double their advantage just seven minutes later. Souza from Bell. We resume 2 0 in favor of Marshall. We said it in our open Marshall head coach Chris Grassi has lamented his team's inability to be clinical at times this year. He said it after their draw against Coastal. Marshall had played in seven matches, decided by one goal or fewer. Just two, two, and three are the Thundering Herd. They have outshot their opponents in five of those matches. Chipped forward, looking for Souza. Now headed back forward by Masiunis. Gutierrez took just a little bit too long on that, and it allows Marshall to recover. Masa Yunus banks that off the boots of Kafka, was looking for Bell. The herd will have a throw in. Dugan ahead, finds Fernandez. Hernandez enters this match top 100 amongst individual players in the NCAA in assists this season. A shocking number of shots right now for Marshall, less than a half hour in. Already nine total shots for the Herd, six of which have gone on goal. Romero has been forced to make four saves early. Carrying it forward is Martin. Now left off here for Vilakaitis, the freshman out of Lithuania. He 
Eagles turn it over, and Marshall looking to pounce on the opportunity. A quick counterattack developed. And now Marshall will settle and build from the back again. Sadu to Dugan. Good ball forward, a little too much behind that. Was looking for Souza. Kafka will hoof that one forward, and now Sadu and the herd will give chase. Georgia Southern have struggled away from Statesboro, lost four of their previous five fixtures away, averaging less than one goal per match in those contests. Again, Marshall moving forward with bags of pace. Alves, the cross, it was blocked out. Almesh goes to ground. No foul given by Hernandez. Bell back on it. Flanked by Sosa. The ground cross. No one on the receiving end for Marshall. Sadu is there off the clearance. And now Dugan and Odame going at it. Yosef will carry it forward. Bell sneaks in behind the back row, but just can't get to that ball in time. Chipped forward by Yosef. Romero read it well. A light slate of games being played around the Sun Belt this Sunday evening. JMU and South Carolina have been underway for about an hour and a half in the Palmetto State. Georgia State up in Morgantown to take on West Virginia. That match just got underway a half hour ago. And then later this evening, Old Dominion at Coastal Carolina. Thundering Herd will be eagerly anticipating a full-time result in that one. Right now, one point back of Old Dominion. Thundering Herd still in play to host the Sun Belt postseason tournament. Now forward to Yosef on this near side. Right now, Marshall just three points back of league leaders Kentucky, who are idle today. Wildcats don't play again until a week from today. Nice job by Almesh carrying it tight on that inline. Make that. It was Adam Almesh, my mistake. The Albany transfer led Albany in goals back in 2020 during the COVID season. That will concede a corner to Marshall, their second of the match. A light breeze here at Hoops Family Field. They'll short the corner will the thundering hurt. Almesh again taking it tight on the line. Okiyoshi shot blocked away. Back out to Yosef to reset. Thaddeus Harp, the freshman, set to come in. Dugan is there off the cross and heads it just wide of the far post. The aforementioned match in Morgantown between the Panthers and the Mountaineers as we look at it again. Great ball, able to find Morris Dugan, a pinpoint pass. The aforementioned match in Morgantown between the Mountaineers and the Panthers. Much like this, a lot of offense early, but more equally spread out. West Virginia strikes first in the second minute. The Panthers respond a minute later. It is 1-1 between Georgia State and West Virginia at the moment.
Forward to Odame. A whistle comes in from Hernandez to end that play. Looking elsewhere around the Sun Belt, James Madison in South Carolina at the moment, tied 1-1. Closing in on the 70th minute between the Gamecocks and the Dukes. Sadu now Mas Yunus surveying his options. Curls one to the far side. Mas Yunus looking to change the angle of the attack. Alves, good defensive run to win that back. Great ball played through to Alves. Has plenty of options. That cross blocked out, batted away by Romero back into play. Romero tried to come out with the punch and could only get a glove on it, and that was dangerous. Put it right back into play. It was Dugan who has possession of the ball now in the 13th minute. Souza followed up in the 20th minute. Two goals, seven minutes apart for Marshall. That has been the difference so far. In case you're just now joining us, along with our outstanding crew, I'm Jake Griffith. A 2-0 lead for Marshall. Just now about to surpass the half hour mark of this contest. Thundering Herd could easily have more. 12 total shots, six on goal. A rare offensive opportunity, perhaps, here for Georgia Southern. Carried forward by Villacaitis. Segrero, the freshman out of Oakwood, Georgia. Sixth straight start today for Segrero. Near side, finds Kafka. A centering ball played through to Segrero, forward, Marshall. Wanted the whistle, and we'll get their wish. Yosef loads of options ahead, kicks it to Alves, and Alves can't get past that final defender. No shots for Georgia Southern so far as we are over the half hour mark of this contest. That's relatively on par for this Georgia Southern team. Eagles dead last in the Sun Belt in assists, goals, points, shots, and shots on goal. Meanwhile, Marshall back on the prowl again. Bell shot blocked. A whistle and a foul. That will be whistled against Villacaitis. He and a Marshall player collided there. Dugan back out wide. Marshall and Milo Yosef adding width to the attack again. Thundering Herd have done a good job of keeping their shape offensively early on. Just six total fouls as well, a relatively clean opening half. The Eagles do play a clean game, fifth in the Sun Belt and fewest fouls committed. Now trying to capitalize perhaps on what could be a counterattack. Dugan overruns the ball and the shot off the leg of Dugan. Simla able to keep it in and avoid conceding a corner kick, just batted it away from the end line.
That was the first shot of the contest from Hilari Orihambo just moments ago, the freshman out of Nairobi, Kenya. Orihambo had that goal against Stetson, denied by Simla and Dugan on the opposite end. Now Marshall back on the attack. A good step up defensively by Gutierrez, the senior out of Costa Rica. Read it well. Couldn't connect on the pass, and Gutierrez showing a little bit of frustration. One of the captains for this Georgia Southern team. Bell with it again. Able to find Okiyoshi. Now Fernandez. Okiyoshi, Fernandez, carries it forward. Foot comes in from behind by Vilakaitis, the Lithuanian, and down goes Vinicius Fernandez. Manuel Prieto set to come in in the substitution area for this Georgia Southern team. A look at the foul from the reverse angle. You have to be careful if you're Vilakaitis anytime you go in from behind like that. Free kick awarded to Marshall and a relatively promising position here for the herd. Milo Yosef looks set to take this. He can strike from this distance. You see the angle on it relatively straight on. And now Ibrahima Jope, the transfer out of UConn, will trot on to the pitch. Off comes Joao Souza. You don't normally see a player carrying their own cleat off the pitch with them, but that is the situation Joao Souza has been dealt with. So Jope on in Souza's stead. Yosef will take this. A line drive ball sent toward goal and just wide of the far post. Yosef, two goals in his last three appearances, nearly had another. Just broke to the left at the last moment. Right idea from Yosef, just couldn't finish it. A couple of stunning results around the country yesterday. We mentioned Marshall earlier being upset by Old Dominion. Also touched on that 3-0 thrashing of number nine Xavier at the top of our broadcast by Georgetown, unranked Georgetown, mind you. UMBC upsetting Vermont 2-1. Catamounts likely falling out of the top 10. St. Louis taking it to Dayton. The number 19 team in the country yesterday, 3-1 for the Billikens. St. Louis women, a top 15 club in the United Soccer Coaches top 25 poll on the women's side. And now the Billikens men's team, a couple of signature wins this season. Syracuse and NC State playing to a 1-1 draw. It was Syracuse earlier this year who were upset by unranked Cornell as Jope takes the service and tries to cross it in. Denied by Romero. It has been really that kind of year in men's collegiate soccer. Colin Masiunis said it to me earlier this week. He said, any other year, if we had the results that we've had as of late, we would not be in the top 10, but the way the season has gone across the country for everyone as Jope gets in behind. Jope. Finds Fernandez, hounded from behind by Odame, and down goes Fernandez. Almesh goes down in the midfield. Pleading his case is Thaddeus Harp, the freshman. Did not play last match against Stetson. And Aaron Hernandez having none of it. 
It will be a free kick for Marshall. A look at it again on the replay. Almesh will take this. Well, place ball, takes a hop off the turf and into the gloves of Dagoberto Romero. Making his ninth consecutive start, as mentioned earlier, had 10 starts. In total this season, as it's back into the gloves of Ali Simla. The Argentinian, Augustin Yusim, sophomore, set to come in for Marshall as the herd will make changes. Their second and third changes set to be made. Also, Alex Jetty, the transfer out of Virginia Tech, set to come on as well. Dugan, forward, finds Okiyoshi. Okiyoshi calm under the pressure. Bell has it at the midfield stripe. Losing ground, a good ball volleyed forward, finds Jope. Relatively stout defending there from Yona Kafka. Able to run that down, the German able to rise Jope off the ball. Bell will trot off the pitch. As will Adam Almash. So it's Yusim and a jetty on for Bell and Almash. Now Yusim already a goal to his credit this year. Tallied one against Pacific in Marshall 7 1, thrashing of Pacific earlier this year here at Hoops Family Field. Head to a jetty. A jetty tried to sidestep the defender, and Thaddeus Harp stuck the foot in. Disrupted that attack. Back forward here. Perhaps an opportunity for Georgia Southern. A whistle comes in from Hernandez. Zachary Martin was carrying it forward, went one on one with Mohamed Seydou. And it will be a free kick awarded to Marshall. Jope has space to move forward with it, overhit that ball. Wanted Milo Yosef. And that will roll past the end line by Alex Smith. Goal kick upcoming for Dagoberto Romero. On comes Ryan Holmes, the freshman out of West Virginia. Had a brace against Pacific earlier this year. Thundering Herd taking every opportunity to go a little bit deeper into their bench in this first half. Simla plays it forward to Dugan now. Dugan with the cross to the near side. Yosef camped underneath it, now with it. Cuts it back to the end line. Yosef, again, on the doorstep, turned away by Georgia Southern. Thundering Herd 
really trying to expose this Georgia Southern defense on the end line. They have had their way with them on that exact same kind of play all evening as on comes Adam LaBelle. A look at it again from the field level. Heads up play by Keon Dean. And LaBelle and Jope will have this spotted for the corner kick. Yosef will come off in favor of LaBelle. Low line drive corner from Jope. LaBelle, his cross blocked out. Chris Grassi, Marshall's head coach, looking for an explanation. None too thrilled with the one he was just given by Adam Walters. Okiyoshi will double back and now finds Dugan. Thundering Herd with two goals in this opening half. They came into this contest with just two or more goals six times this year, which if that holds up, or if that held up, I should say, would have been their fewest since the 2020 season. Marshall really relied on their defense during that national championship run. Scored only two or more goals just five times that year, but Marshall showing off why they are the second highest scoring offense in the Sun Belt this year, averaging 2.3 goals per match right on that pace today. It was Dugan in the 13th minute, Souza in the 20th minute, and that has held up to this point. Odame went down, wanted a call. Meanwhile, plenty of space to move for Yusim. Yusim back out wide to Jope on this near side. Ibrahima Jope leaves it off for Masayunis. Back to Jope. Really feels like something could be building here for Marshall. No sooner than I say that, a good defensive stand by Georgia Southern, and Jope will fire it out wide. Wanted to find Alex Ajedi, it looked like, who was the only man in the area. Romero can take his time, and that very well could be the last offensive push forward before the intermission break here at Hoops Family Field. A jetty, a foot race. He goes clattering to the ground. They'll play it to Alves, and Alves will swing it back to Dugan. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, Left off for Okiyoshi. Hurd will try to get one three, more shot, three, and that one. venture toward goal won't be successful. However, the Herd will take a two-goal cushion into the intermission. Georgia Southern hoping their offense heats up in this second half. They muster just one shot. Five first-half saves for Dagoberto Romero. The whistle sounds from Aaron Hernandez. And we are underway for the second half. No options going forward for Gabriel Alves. Plays it back to Dugan. 
And now to Seydou, the original starting 11 back on the pitch for Marshall. Back through the middle, they find Fernandez. Fernandez goes skipping to the turf, advantage played by Hernandez. Headed back into the possession of Romero, and that will bring it into what was a potential Marshall chance. Thundering Herd will have some work cut out for them in this second half, moving toward the setting sun. Officials, fans alike, as play moves to that opposite end, sort of squinting, holding the hand up. Meanwhile, a counterattack opportunity here for Georgia Southern. Shot comes in toward goal, and the best opportunity of the evening so far for Georgia Southern comes on the counterattack. Hernandez motions for a corner, and that will be the first set piece of this match for Georgia Southern. Navy shirts will move forward. Masiunas just got overrun there by Sagrero, making his sixth consecutive start. And this could change the complexion of this match in a hurry. Outswinging corner. Whipped on initially. Ball is still live. Dugan can't clear the lines. Back forward to Odihambo. Going hard in on Bell there was Alex Smith. Bell kept his footing about him. Now Almesh tangled up with Okumu. Okumu played his club soccer in St. Louis, Missouri for the Gateway City Club. Got an assist last match against Stetson. It looks like that's Souza who went down and I believe the whistle sounded from Hernandez. That was the quietest whistle I've ever heard. Alves back to Sedu. Over to Masi Yunus now. Masi Yunus will wait one forward. Thundering herd players clustering up, trying to force a midfield turnover. Instead, down goes an eagle. They play on. Marshall trying to capitalize on a numbers advantage, perhaps. Almesh goes down. Hernandez really letting them play this evening. Very open play now. Great sliding tackle comes in from Alves. Now a whistle comes in and a quick yellow card shown to Okumu, the other fresh from Nairobi, Kenya. A 49th minute yellow card shown to Okumu. First booking of the evening from Hernandez. Now forward to Alves, finds Almesh. Almesh going at it there with Dean on the near side. Marshall have won the throw on this near touchline. Alves will chuck it in, able to find Dugan. They want to play Yosef through. They do successfully as he tracks that down. His cross intercepted, however, and cleared back away. Guided back to Souza, now Dugan. Telegraphed that pass in the middle, was looking for Yosef. It was intercepted by Kubel. Hey. 
Almesh will back heel one forward. Alves had it, got it tangled up at his feet and coughs it up. A throw given to Georgia Southern. Just two other top 25 clubs in action this evening. Number five, Stanford on the road at UCLA. That will be a tough test for the Stanford Cardinal and Missouri State, the number 18 team in the nation at Belmont. Ball, caroms to Bell. Now Yosef on the doorstep, bangs it off the post, but finishing is Okiyoshi. A third tally added to Marshall's total thanks to Taimu Okiyoshi, the native of Kobe, Japan. A decisive finish for the thundering herd. You felt like that was coming at some point. Yosef couldn't finish initially, and Taimu Okiyoshi there to clean up the mess. Three goals in 51 minutes for Marshall. The onslaught continues for the Sun Belt's second highest scoring club this season. Okiyoshi has his second and the thundering herd. One would think this could be enough to get Marshall across the finish line in this match. We resume, 3-0 the lead for the country's sixth-ranked team, the Marshall Thundering Herd. Head to Alex Smith. Smith, good to see him back on the pitch this season. Saw only three appearances last year before departing with an injury and missing the rest of the season, making his 11th start this year. Had a goal against their in-state rivals, Georgia State. A great step up by Joao Pedro. Now Yosef speeding forward. Bags of pace Yosef and the herd are moving with, and it's intercepted by Keon Dean. The pace had become more plodding toward the end of that first half. Things have really opened up as this second half has gotten underway. The herd have gotten goals from Okiyoshi, Souza, and Dugan. Now Masayunis probing ball forward. Just left to the inside a little bit. Enough for Alex Smith to boot it out of play. Quick throw in taken by Alves. Back to him from Souza. Make that Fernandez who goes back to Alves. A telegraphed pass there for the Eagles. Now Souza pulls up lame. Hurd will have the throw on that far side. Georgia Southern just with two shots today as Marshall continues to ask questions of this Eagle defense. Trying to break out from their defensive third desperately looking to clear the lines, and that will take a little bit of pressure off, but one back by Marshall. Dugan back to Sadu. This Georgia Southern offense, though, has reached historically low marks. Fewest goals through 13 matches since the 20, or excuse me, the 2009 campaign. Shout out just six times last year, in danger of now their ninth which would be the most in a campaign since 2007 and 09. Yosef crossed back in, was looking for Almash. Dugan will step in front, angle that out. Eagles will have the throw.
Ball hooked forward a little too far out of the reach of Odihambo. And it's back to the possession of Ali Simla. Prieto had it for a moment, gave it up to Akumo. Smith and Alves going at it on the near side. Alves volleys it forward, and so does Yosef. In stride, hits Almesh. Dean concedes the throw. Yosef, quick toss in, finds Fernandez. Tried to cross it back to the near side. Did Masi Yunus was looking for Almesh. Turned away by Alex Smith. Marshall still settling on it. Give and go back between Alves and Yosef. Now Fernandez. Back to Alves. Masiunis takes a little bump there on the far side. It does give up the throw to the thundering herd. Bell gets overrun by the defender who clatters into him. Bell will have a quick free kick at least tried to take the quick free kick, and Hernandez whistles it back. Marshall came into today closing in on eclipsing their 2021 20, total in goals. 27 goals this season, which ranked as the 32nd most in the nation. That number will rise already at the 30 mark. Could be more depending on the way the rest of this match continues. Intercepted by Fernandez. Coughed up in a poor area by Georgia Southern. Back through the middle, and that will carry him into the back of the net. An own goal tagged against Nick Getridge, the freshman out of Columbus, Georgia. It just sums up the evening for Georgia Southern. Romero didn't know about that one. And Getridge, just a howler of a mistake from the young freshman, increases Marshall's total today. A 4-0 lead for the Thundering Herd. John Murphy. Cannot be thrilled about that. Marshall back on the attack now. Yosef will carry it wide. Wants to cut back into the middle and does. At least for a moment. This Georgia Southern team just needing to find an answer. 
In their last 630 minutes played, they have only scored four combined goals. Perhaps a chance here for Odi Hombo, and that was quickly cut out by Colin Masiunis. A great defensive effort, individual effort as well. Third will have the throw from the far side. Marshall, this result seemingly well in hand despite being about 30 minutes away from a full-time result. Marshall will hit the road in their next contest to close out non-conference play completely. They'll visit the Raiders of Wright State. Marshall took down Wright State 1-0 here at Hoops Family Field last season toward the tail end of the regular season. And then Marshall will return home as the calendar flips to November to take on James Madison. Alves hounded there by Smith. The cross comes in over everyone's head, booted away off the volley. Sadu keeps the possession alive for Marshall. Marshall up to 19 total shots, eight shots on goal. Good ball played through the middle by Yosef. Bell couldn't settle on it, a testament to Gutierrez. Alves will just cross that in to an empty area behind the goal, and that will bring about an end to that offensive opportunity for the herd. Back on, Trotz Segrero. The freshman out of Oakwood, Georgia. Another chance here for Marshall. Too much weight behind that cross, and it's over everyone's head again. Dean with it, now Dean will move forward. As it stands right now with Kentucky Idol currently alone in the top spot, two points clear of Old Dominion are the Wildcats. 12 total points for Johan Settergren in his 11th season at the helm of that Kentucky program. That UK team, 
They are always such a tough out. Marshall and Kentucky played a hard fought 1-1 draw earlier this year. As Yosef crashing in toward goal on the doorstep again, a beautiful service from Milo Yosef. Adam Almesh buries it for his first goal of the year. At this point, Marshall just scoring goals for fun on this Georgia State team, excuse me, Georgia Southern team. Yosef, great vision, great find, and Adam Almesh able to open his goal scoring account late into the year, his first goal of the season. It was just two years ago, Almesh paced that Albany squad with four goals and nine points during the 2020 campaign. A 5-0 lead for the Thundering Herd as we resume. Georgia Southern player went down. Alves able to carry it ahead, and now significant Navy shirts will fly back to the ball, trying to recover defensively. Over everyone's head, off the volley, chipped back in. Finds Fernandez, cuts back through. Coughed it up initially, and now does cough it up as Vilkaitis will take over. A whistle and a free kick given. Now a little extracurricular shown here. Alvis, I believe, was just shown yellow. Alves will come off, and that will be his fifth yellow of the year, which means Gabriel Alves, due to card accumulation, will miss Marshall's next match at Wright State. Of course, if you're the Thundering Herd, you are probably, probably would rather have Alves miss a non-conference <laughs> match than, say, the Sun Belt Tournament. You never want to lose a significant player like that at any juncture of the season. However, Eagles will have a free kick in quite the spot here. A chance to at least find a way to get themselves on the board in this match. The match is never truly over until the full-time whistle sounds. So if you could just get one, it could start something here perhaps for Georgia Southern. Simla can't get to it. Read it to the right side of goal, but well placed on the set piece. Manuel Prieto tallies his third goal of the season, and Georgia Southern 
finally break through. Look at the way this ball breaks, just slips, not even inches past Simla's glove. A 5-1 scoreline at the restart. And you just saw the replay on that. Simla obviously read it well. He read where Prieto was going, but sometimes good offense beats good defense. And that is what happened there with Manuel Prieto on that free kick opportunity. Prieto's goal, just the fifth for Georgia Southern across their last eight matches. Thundering Herd will not keep the sheet clean this evening. However, they do have a free kick upcoming as Taimu Okiyoshi will chat with Hernandez and get set to take this. It is certainly unlikely, but as I mentioned earlier, really all you need is one to jumpstart a fight back if you're Georgia Southern. Take it one goal at a time, and now the Eagles back on it. Martin can't get past Dugan. LaBelle with it now. Okiyoshi, Marshall losing ground now. They'll go back to Sadu. Almesh on the overlap finds Fernandez. His cross blocked away. Another corner kick conceded by Georgia Southern. They'll short the corner again, Will Marshall. Fernandez looking to curl it into that far post and sails over everyone's heads. Kafka will come back on for Georgia Southern. Mentioned earlier that Old Dominion will visit Coastal Carolina. The Chanticleers are such an intriguing matchup for any team. Coastal in league play 0, 0, and 5. All five of their points in the table have come off of five draws. One of those being a nil-nil draw against Marshall earlier this year back in the month of September. Chanticleers have tied four consecutive matches. It'll be interesting to see because Coastal Carolina, a team that really likes to pack it in on the back, they may not score, but their mentality is neither will you. Just two matches ago, had a chance to look at this Old Dominion team as well. Similar-minded team as Old Dominion and their longtime skipper, Alan Dawson, as down goes Prieto, the goal scorer for Georgia Southern. Old Dominion a, a little more enterprising when it comes to finding a goal than Coastal Carolina. But the Monarchs and the Chanticleers both will likely line up with five on the back. And that could very quickly turn into a rock fight down in Conway, South Carolina.
Ball coughed up right at the top of the box to Bell. Bell pushed it a little too far in front of himself. And that is enough time for Dagoberto Romero to scoop it up, drop kick it away. Very nearly overrunning the ball was Sadu. Thundering Hurt set to make the equivalent of a hockey line change in the substitution area. By my count, seven players make it eight, including a new goalkeeper, all set to come in for the Thundering Herd at the next available opportunity. It's not every day you see that. <laughs> Yosef out wide to Almesh. One of five goal scorers today is Adam Almesh. Trying to play it back to Yosef, and again, that was intercepted. Volley back forward by Dugan. Now LaBelle. Gutierrez comes up with it as Georgia Southern trying to turn a counterattack opportunity. Ridden to the turf was Kubel by Fernandez and the free kick quickly taken by Georgia Southern. Ireland played back into the middle. Bell, the pass was telegraphed, won that back. Numbers advantage here for Marshall. Three on two opportunity. Almash, top of the box. Yosef tried to weave it back through to Bell. Yosef intercepts, and Yosef strikes. Two assists today for the German, and now a goal to his credit. Milo Yosef, eight goals on the campaign. A 6-1 advantage for Marshall. Just a careless pass laterally across the goal mouth. And when you have a talented striker like Milo Yosef on the doorstep, you cannot give them any opportunity. Marshall will make their eight-man change as Bell, Yosef, Semwa, Okiyoshi, Fernandez, Dugan, Masayunas all come off. Marshall back on the attack now. Messiah Sekaguchi tried to run that down, was cleared away by Manuel Prieto, and Adam LaBelle will toss it in. 
LaBelle, the cross to the far side of the box. Final 15 minutes of this contest. This has been a long day at the office for this Georgia Southern team. About as long as the shadows cast on the pitch right now. They will host West Virginia in their next contest. Mountaineers trying to find their footing late in the campaign. It was a rocky start for WVU to open. They still sit at four, six, and four overall. They've tied back-to-back -back matches, but seven points in the table. And a chance, if they can outright take all three tonight, they will leapfrog. Georgia State parried away there and finally grabbed by Dagoberto Romero to end the opportunity. This result looks well in hand for Marshall, who with the win will move back atop the table with Kentucky. Wildcats 3-0-3 in league play, 12 total points. Marshall with nine, so a win today We'll give each of them 12 points. And then, of course, pending the result in Conway tonight, it could be a short-lived stint atop the table for Marshall. Old Dominion have put together back-to-back -back wins. You can never count out Allen Dawson's bunch. Six, four, and two overall on the season. Three, one, and one in league play. Old Dominion strikes you as a team that they talk about getting hot at the right time, peaking when it matters most, and Old Dominion seems to be doing that, catching fire when it matters most. Gutierrez helped to his feet by the Georgia Southern training staff, and he will trot off. On comes Akumu in his stead. Thundering Herd will lift it forward. And running out of room was Sekiguchi. And it will be a throw in for Georgia Southern. Thundering Herd will honor six seniors at the conclusion of this match. Sort of a non-traditional senior day, both in terms of it not being the final home fixture and also not doing it before the contest. Had a chance to talk to all six of Marshall's seniors earlier this week and the message was the same amongst all six of them. They're very grateful and appreciative of their time here at Marshall. Obviously some sad feelings that their time is coming to an end but very appreciative of what the Marshall coaching staff have done for them and looking to go out on top once again.
Back forward, a jetty, able to slip past one. Now a second, wanted to weave it back through and LaBelle will give chase. He is able to keep it in. Nice moves there, tight on the touchline by Adam LaBelle. Thundering Hurts and Milo Yosef back to the substitution area. One of the last times that Yosef will have a chance to play in front of these home supporters. Jope on a frozen rope into the middle, a jetty. That was a great ball played to his boots by Ibrahima Jope and Jetty just pounded it high into the air. Chase Winters will come on for the first time today. Yosef will return, will come on for Adam Almesh. It has been a difficult day for Georgia Southern, but perhaps one of the bright spots, and it really has been the consistent theme all year, the lone bright spot, has been the play of Dagoberto Romero. Faced 10 shots today, made five saves. As mentioned, had eight saves against number three Kentucky earlier this year. Came in 73rd in the nation in total saves. Had a seven save performance against North Florida earlier this year. These are the kind of growing pains that a program goes through when you're essentially trying to rebuild something from the ground up. Sixteen total freshmen on this Georgia Southern roster. True freshmen. Eagles fans may be disheartened now, but you have a team that goes through trials and tribulations like this, and we said it earlier during the halftime report. They will be, be they will be better, I should say, because of this. It may not seem like it now, but you look at. For example, the Marshall women's soccer team who picked up a 4-1 win prior to this match. A great interception by Sekiguchi. It's two seasons ago, Marshall went winless in conference play. They had one senior in their starting 11. Very next year, finished with just one point in the league table. Had two seniors in their starting 11. Majority were sophomores and freshmen. And then look at this year, Marshall the women's soccer program on the cusp of qualifying for the postseason for the first time since 2018. At the moment, the Thundering Herd in the 10th spot in the Sun Belt Women's Soccer Tournament. Nine total points in the league table. It's doable. It's a slow burn process. You have to stomach the bad because then eventually you'll get the good. And that is what Georgia Southern is hoping for, a slow burn with the 16 freshmen sprinkled throughout this lineup. Sekiguchi plays a jetty through, another opportunity. Yosef and the herd get it back again. 
Back out wide to a jetty. Going one on one with Winters. Great cutback. Oh, nice misdirection from a jetty. A well timed slide from Winters. Corner kick one by a jetty on a nice run and some nifty moves. Five corners now for the Thundering Herd this evening. As we close in on the final stretches of this match at Hoops Family Field, 85th minute upcoming. Great service in from a jetty. Bamford couldn't strike it off the volley. Jope nearly does the splits trying to reach for that one, and it rolls past the end line for a Romero goal kick. Ali Simla there, taking in the rest of the match after being subbed out for Gabe Sittler. If there's one area that Marshall needs to perhaps clean up as they hope to make a deep postseason run. As Georgia Southern crashing in again toward the final third, Marshall able to deal with it. It is allowing some of these easy chances to slip by. One goal allowed now in five straight appearances for Simla. He has played out of his mind the last three years for Marshall. And part of it is a new look back line for the herd. Simla and his center backs and Dugan and Sedu trying to figure things out. Masayunas has shifted to the outside. A little bit of familiarity there, but uh, even though they have all five played together for a whole season, still developing that relationship. It's well documented, gone are players like a Nathan Dos Santos or Jan Eric Leinhos. Eagles will take the corner from the near side. It's Prieto who will send it in. Out swinging corner kick. Skips past everyone's head and now Kafka will fire it off the volley. Wide of goal. And Gabe Sittler can take his time to spot it for the goal kick. But again, though, going back to that discussion of a deep postseason run, the slight things to clean up, it's the very minute, finer details. And I think that's sort of a testament to how, I don't want to use the term spoiled, but just how, I guess, spoiled this program has made its, its fans of how much success they've had. They've been treated very well, this fan base has, to some great football over the last three seasons. It isn't as if the Thundering Herd have glaring weaknesses. They just have very tiny, fine-tuned details to clean up as the postseason continues to get ever closer. Yosef really battling there with Dean. No, make that harp. Harp initially had a well-timed sliding challenge to disrupt Yosef's run to the ball, and then able to win a throw in for Georgia Southern. Sixty seconds until a full-time whistle from Aaron Hernandez will bring this to a close. 
The third time this year, the Thundering Herd have scored five or more goals as Jope muscled off the ball. They did so in the opener against VCU. Thrashed Pacific 7-1 and now a 6-1 shellacking of conference mates Georgia Southern in their penultimate home match of 2022's regular season. Sadu will play it back to LaBelle. The 10 second countdown begins and these home supporters will head home happy on a Sunday evening. Full time in Huntington. Marshall picks up win number eight. A 6-1 result.